You know, you're an excessive self-conscious person. You know that? What? You only feel that way because you think that she's harassing you. No way. I mustered up my courage to consult my husband about it, but instead of being understanding, he blamed me. If you don't like it, then why don't you just leave? But, well, you don't have a home to go back to since your parents are both gone, haha. <laughs> my husband snickered at me as he said that. I clenched my fists and glared at him. Fine, I'll go back to my parents' house. My name is Gloria. I'm 30 years old and I work in a company. It has been two years since I married my husband, Manny. I first met Manny while I was at work. We were both in charge of a project together. And since we began working together many times, we gradually became closer. My husband was three years older than me and I was attracted to him early on, partly because he was much more mature and stable. When a project we were working on together came to a close, he invited me to dinner and we began seeing each other privately as well. Not long after that, we started dating and got married a year later. One of the reasons I decided to marry him was because of his kindness. My mother died when I was very young and my father also died of illness when I had just started working. My parents were originally from the countryside and I hardly had any connections with our relatives, so I had no one to rely on and was left on my own. My husband felt sorry that I had no parents and often took me to his parents' house for dinner. My in-laws were very kind, and my mother-in-law, Tessa, told me that they had always wanted a daughter, and I felt the warmth of family for the first time in a long time. After that, I visited my parents-in-law's house several times, and each time they were kind to me, so I thought I could build a good relationship with them even after marrying Manny. And even after we got married, I visited my parents-in-law's house regularly. My in-laws never changed their attitude after I married my husband, and they always greeted us warmly. Oh, I am so glad that you married Manny, Gloria. I was worried about him because he is my only son and it was hard to find a good wife for him. Thank you so much. I was really happy to hear that from my in-laws. But then something very sad happened. My father-in-law fell ill and passed away. When my husband and I rushed to the hospital room, Tessa was all in tears. My husband was also really shocked by the sudden event. I had thought I had found a family again, but I was so sad to have lost one so quickly. Tessa was so depressed that she was not going to be able to prepare for the funeral. I took over for her and proceeded to make arrangements for the funeral. I wanted to do whatever I could do to help her. My husband and I made the funeral arrangements together, and we were able to hold the funeral without any issues. Many people attended my father-in-law's funeral, and everyone gave him a good send-off, saying their goodbyes. And when the funeral was all over, my husband said this to me. Since mom must be lonely on her own, why don't we move in with her? It was a proposal to move in with Tessa. Normally, I would have hesitated, but I immediately agreed to move in with Tessa. I had a good relationship with her, and I had no parents who I could take care of. I wanted my husband to take care of Tessa as much as possible, and I was willing to help him achieve one of those things by moving in with Tessa. My husband was very happy when I agreed to his suggestion. Thank you so much, Gloria. Now I won't have to make my mom feel lonely. Soon after, we moved to Tessa's house and started living together with her. Even after we started living together, Tessa was really kind. I made fried chicken today. Wow, it looks very delicious. You're always working so hard. Heat up. Thank you so much. Like this, we were spending happy days as a family. But little by little, Tessa's attitude started to change gradually. Oh, Gloria, you're getting in bath right now? Huh? Yes, that's what I was planning to do. How dare you? Manny hasn't even gotten in the bath yet. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I heard Manny had a drinking party today, so I thought he might be home late. You don't have to make excuses. 
You're becoming shameless day by day, aren't you? Huh? Oh, I I didn't mean it that way, but I'm sorry. Tissa began to complain to me about everything since then. I was bothered, wondering why her attitude had changed like that. And one day I found out the reason. Gloria, can you just do something about this? Huh? What are you talking about? When are you going to get pregnant and have a baby? Finally, Tessa said what had been bothering her. It has been three years since you got married to Manny, right? I think it's normal to have at least one child and show my grandchild's face to me. Tessa seemed to be angry that we couldn't have children. I am sorry. We are trying to have a baby, but we aren't in a hurry too. We were just talking about how it's a blessing once we have a baby and we should wait for it to happen naturally. Are you making excuses like that again? You really are so dishonest and your attitude is so bad. You brought Manny into it too and made it sound like it wasn't your fault. Is it because you were raised by a single parent? Excuse me? I was stunned to hear her say such a thing. I didn't think these words came from Tessa, who had been so kind to me until then. After that, Tessa began to verbally abuse me. If you are a wife, you are supposed to stay at home and support your husband. But you're so arrogant to push through your own selfishness and continue working. It must be because you were spoiled all your life. You never have children, you never quit your job, and you are a really bad wife. I have never met a woman with such a terrible attitude like you. Every time we saw each other, she would say things like that, and I became more and more stressed. I wondered where Tessa, who was so kind to me back then, had gone to. And Tessa mainly began to bully me when my husband was not around. My husband did not know that I was being treated that way by Tessa. But I could not stand it any longer and decided to talk to my husband about it. Manny, would you please tell Tessa that she has been treating me badly for quite some time now? What? Treating you badly? Yeah, she's been saying some pretty heartless things to me. When I said that, my husband looked annoyed and scratched his head. Is that true? I don't think my mother would do something like that, though. I I didn't think Tessa would ever treat me like this either. But lately, she's been really aggressive with me. You know, you're an excessive self-conscious person, you know that? What? You only feel that way because you think that she's harassing you. No way. I mustered up my courage to consult my husband about it, but instead of being understanding, he blamed me. And after that, Manny and Tessa started to pick on me. Why do you eat the same food as me when I make more money than you? You're right, honey. She should just only eat the leftovers. That's right. Oh yeah, mom, let's go out for some nice Italian sometime. Just the two of us. She has no right to eat nice meals, so let's make her stay at home. Sounds good. And just you and me. You'd better clean up around the house while we're gone. Tessa and Manny enjoyed excluding me from the family. They would turn away my clothes for laundry, only prepare dinner for them and not me, and always tell me to take the bath last, then drain the water from the tub before I could even get in. They did this to me every day, and I was getting tired of how they were treating me. In the end, I just couldn't stand it anymore. Can you both please stop this? What in the world did I do? I asked for help because Tessa was treating me so badly, and now you and Tessa are bullying me. If you don't like it, then why don't you just leave? But well, you don't have a home to go back to since your parents are both gone, haha. <laughs> My husband snickered at me as he said that. At this moment, Something snapped in me. There was nothing more I could say to him. I clenched my fists and glared at my husband. Fine. I'm going back to my parents' house. 
What? Your parents' house? My husband widened his eyes and then laughed out loud. What are you being so stubborn for? Your parents are gone, so you don't have a home or place to go back to, do you? I'm not being stubborn. I'm leaving here because I can't keep going on like this with you anymore. Oh, really? Is that so? Then just pack up your stuff and get out of here. I got scammed by marrying a useless person like you who can't even get pregnant with our child. I couldn't believe that I was married to someone who would say such terrible things to me. I lost all affection for my husband at once. As I was packing my bags, Tessa came over here. You're finally leaving, huh? I'm so glad to get rid of this parasite from our family. Get the hell out of here. Don't ever let me see your face again. Tessa would say such terrible things to me like that, but I completely ignored her and continued to pack my bags. Later on, after I finished moving out, I went to the city office to pick up the divorce papers and mail them to Manny. Manny immediately returned the signed divorce papers, so I filed them, and my divorce from my ex-husband was finalized. I then focused on my work, but about two years after my divorce, I fell in love again when I reconnected with a childhood friend, Tom. He and I had gone to kindergarten through high school together, but we drifted apart when he went out of state for college. And after my father passed away and I sold our house, I no longer had the opportunity to visit him near his parents' house, which made it even more difficult for me to see him. It just so happened that I was having drinks with a classmate from high school when someone called Tom over and we met again. Then we catched up, talked about what was happening in our lives, and we started seeing each other as well. After that, we began to go out and then found out that I was pregnant. So we decided to get married, even though pregnancy came first. I had met his parents many times since I was a child, and they treated me as if I were their own daughter. We then bought a house and lived happily together with our newborn child. Then, it was around that time, I suddenly bumped into my ex-husband again. What? Hey, hey, aren't you Gloria? When I turned to him, I saw my ex-husband and a young woman with a really heavy makeup on next to him. What are you doing here? I was standing in front of the apartment building where I lived at the time. My husband had told me he had forgotten something back at the apartment, so I had gone ahead and took the elevator down. This is in front of a luxury apartment building. Do you even know that? If you just stand there like that, people will think you're suspicious, you know? My ex-husband said as he snickered. The young woman next to him also said, I mean, you already look like a suspicious person. We just met and she was already being rude to me like that. I ignored her, but my ex-husband didn't like it and began to pick on me. Hey, how dare you ignore me? I'm sure a poor and parentless person like you lived a miserable life in a really cheap apartment anyway, right? My ex-husband began to assume such things about me and began to bully me once again. Then finally, Tom came out from the entrance. I'm sorry, Gloria. I went back inside since I realized I forgot to bring extra diapers. So that's why you were late, huh? Huh? Do you know these people? He's my ex-husband. It seems like he happened to walk by here and began to pick on me. If you hadn't forgotten something, I wouldn't have had to see that prick's face. I'm s sorry I'm just joking, honey. It's true that this guy is a prick, though. I looked at my ex-husband contemptuously. My ex-husband's face turned pale when he found out that my current husband came out of the apartment and that Tom and I were living in the same apartment and even had a child together. Y you you're living here? P plus, you have a child. Yes, I am. Manny was in shock. I guess he was shocked that I, whom he had made fun of earlier, was more successful than he was. And since it was a good opportunity, I told him something. By the way, 
But when I left your parents' house, I really actually had a family home to go back to. My father was a wealthy man and owned several properties. Before he died of illness, I inherited his properties so that I could receive the income made from his properties. The family home that I lived in with my father was already sold when he died, but it sold for thousands of dollars, so I had a good amount of savings. When I left, I lived by myself in one of the rooms of the rental apartment my father owned. No, no way! You're... W wealthy? Why didn't you tell me that when we were married? Oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure, but I thought I'd keep it from you. Maybe, subconsciously, I didn't really trust you or Tessa. But I have to give myself a pat on the back for the way I used to be. Because both you and Tessa were bullying me terribly. And now you're changing your attitude towards me after finding out that I'm wealthy. I'm really glad we had a divorce before you found out about how wealthy I am. Thanks to you, I'm happily married now, and we're blessed with a child. Oh, and since I was able to get pregnant, if you can't have kids, maybe it's because of you. Well, I'm gonna go now. If you start hanging around here, I will report you immediately. As I said this to him, my ex-husband's face got even more pale and it seemed like he couldn't keep his mouth shut. The young woman next to my ex-husband said, How lame! and let go of her arm that was around his arm and walked away by herself. I got into the car with my husband and our child and left. A little while later, the general manager of the company where my ex-husband worked came into the office where I worked for a business meeting, and I decided to ask him about my ex-husband. The manager looked a little awkward and told me about Manny. He told me that Manny had made a huge mistake at work since then and had been transferred as a demotion with a pay cut. But he said that Manny had become arrogant to everyone around him refusing to admit his own faults. And, as a result of his demotion, he started going to pubs and bars to vent his stress out and started to spend a lot of money on drinks and women. There are rumors that he has been paying quite a bit to the woman he met there, and he has even been using his own mother's pension in order to pay for the woman. In other words, he is spending Tessa's money without any permission. But Manny was still unable to do his job properly, and the company was wondering when to fire him. And it was around that time Manny began not coming to work, without any prior notice. So the company fired Manny. When I asked him when he began to do that, it was right around the time when my ex-husband and I met again. I was sure that he had paid a lot of money to that woman at that time and had been dumped by her. So he stopped coming to work because he got depressed. Tessa probably would never have thought that her own son would become unemployed, being fired from his job, and that he would just be all depressed in his room. I think it's nice that my ex-husband took the fall on his own, and I think I'll forget about my ex-husband now and live happily ever after with my current husband and our sweet little child. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video.